amniocentesis versus chorionic villus sampling is the topic. And uh, these are uh, tests that are done um, that can detect a lot of birth uh, defects, uh, a lot of um, unfortunate uh, consequences that can occur, such as trisomies and uh, many other chromosomal abnormalities. Some of the more common ones include, of course, uh, Down syndrome and Fragile X uh, syndrome. Now, these uh, tests are uh, unfortunately um, invasive, and because they're invasive, they involve a fetal risk. The risk is small, but it definitely is present. So what I'm drawing essentially is some of the layers. So in the middle is the fetus, and the fetus is surrounded by a sac, and inside the sac you have amniotic fluid that the fetus is essentially swimming in. And then there's a membrane right here, and this membrane is essentially known as the chorion. And out here you have these villi coming out, and as you can probably deduce, they're known as chorionic villi. Now amniocentesis, amniocentesis essentially involves um, inserting a needle into this amniotic fluid area and withdrawing amniotic fluid and then getting fetal cells. So that's an amniocentesis procedure and it done in the second trimester, most commonly 14 weeks gestation. Chorionic villi sampling essentially involves sampling the chorionic villi, a small a sample of the uh, chorionic villi. And that can be done a little bit earlier, so usually about 8 to 10 weeks gestation. And um, that essentially is the, the fundamental uh, difference. So let's now do a head-to-head -head comparison of both of these and see what differences and similarities we get. So amniocentesis essentially involves inserting a needle into the amniotic fluid and getting out fetal cells. And then those fetal cells are then measured and tested um, and you can test things like alpha fetal protein as well which can be used as a marker for many of the um, chromosomal abnormalities. Safest time to do this is about 14 weeks gestation, second trimester. You can offer this to all women above the age of 35 because after this age the risk of uh, having an infant with Down syndrome or another chromosomal abnormality is increased. So I'll list those, Down syndrome, Fragile X, and several others. Unfortunately, because this is an invasive test, there is a risk of fetal loss. Now the risk is very small, it's only 0.1 to 0.2 percent, but unfortunately um, the consequence is so devastating that it's very important to take into consideration. And now let's turn our attention to CVS. CVS, of course, as I drew in the diagram, involves sampling the chorionic villi. The chorion is basically one, a membrane uh, between the fetus and the mother, and the villi essentially are part of that, and you take a small, small sample. The good news is that this can be done a little bit earlier, 10 weeks gestation, 8 to 10 weeks gestation. Now, the reason this is preferred sometimes is because it can provide earlier results. And that may mean, if necessary, uh, that the pregnancy can be electively terminated earlier, if need be, based on the test results of the CVS. One drawback is alpha fetal protein cannot be measured um, with this uh, test. So the alpha fetal protein test can't be done, but this particular uh, test cannot be done. Um, the risk of fetal loss is about the same, 0.2%, but 
but there is one particular side effect or, or devastating consequence that can happen and it involves a limb defects basically a child or fetus or baby being born without a limb now um, this is very rare but it can happen and that's why licensing exams like to talk about it so let's uh, take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like a 27 year old woman uh, gravita 2 para 1 at 10 weeks gestation comes to who the physician for a routine prenatal visit she is concerned about the risk for down syndrome in her fetus because her first child was uh, had down syndrome she would like to be tested as soon as possible there is no personal or family history of serious illness. Exam shows a uterus consistent in size with a 10-week pregnancy. Which of the following is the most appropriate diagnostic test for this syndrome in this patient at this time? Well, 10 weeks gestation is a little too earlier for amniocentesis. And um, essentially that's really what they're getting at. And they kind of uh, point to that. You know, they really are telling you she wants the results as soon as possible and Down syndrome is definitely um, detected with chorionic villus sampling and it can be done as early as 10, 8 to 10 weeks. So the answer is C. Uh, next question. A 28-year-old uh, primigravid woman at 8 weeks gestation um, comes to the physician for her first prenatal visit. A home pregnancy test was positive. She has no complaints. She is concerned, however, because she is a carrier of the fragile X mutation. Her husband is also known to be a carrier. This is a highly desired pregnancy. She wants to know whether there is a way to determine whether the fetus is affected. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? Um, interestingly, chorionic villus sampling uh, is not... Uh, reliable for fragile X. I just wanted to mention that. So, and I don't even think they mentioned fragile X as one of the answer choices, so we're, we don't have to worry about it. So, what do you need to do here? Well, without a doubt, uh, amniocentesis, uh, which can be done um, in the second trimester, usually about 14 weeks, uh, is the test that you can do to help detect if the fetus is uh, affected with fragile X. So the answer, of course, is D. Um, some of these answer choices, you may be wondering, uh, there is nothing to offer this couple. That's not really true. There is something to offer the couple. Offer testing of the parents. Well, they're already um, known to be carriers, so that doesn't necessarily be something you would do. MRI of the fetus. Um, is not correct because the uh, imaging study would not be uh, able to detect the DNA based molecular problems that are occurring in fragile X. It's more of a, this is a chromosomal problem. So you need to do a test that's specific for a chromosomal analysis, and that's not an MRI. And then offer termination of pregnancy. Uh, that's not correct because this is a highly desired pregnancy, and we do have alternatives. Um, other than just immediately offering termination. So that's why D is definitely the right answer. And then the final one, a 44-year-old woman, gravita 4, para 3, 8 weeks gestation, comes to a physician for her first prenatal visit. Um, she has mild nausea and vomiting, but no other complaints. Her obstetric history is significant for three full-term normal vaginal deliveries of normal infants. She has no medical or surgical history, takes no medication. Physical exam reveals an eight-week eight week sized uterus, but is otherwise unremarkable. She wishes to have chromosomal testing of the fetus and wants to have chorionic villus sampling performed. As she did with her last pregnancy, compared with amniocentesis, chorionic villus sampling may place the patient at greater risk for which of the following? An interesting question. Like I said, it's very rare, but it can happen and in particular, you can look this up online, the very rare but unfortunate side effect of chorionic villus sampling is called transverse digital deficiency. And essentially what that means is that it's a limb defect. 
So the answer would be choice B.